can you succeed in the field of AI and machine learning without knowing the math? There are some folks who will say that you need a deep knowledge of mathematics in machine learning. And on the other hand, there are some folks who say that you simply have to know how to use the different libraries and train a machine learning model. So my question is, who is right? There are two misconceptions here. The first one is AI is all about coding and using libraries that other people have built. So that just means you need to be an expert in coding and you don't have to worry about the math behind all the machine learning models. This is far from the truth. And here's why. Let's say you were interviewing for multiple companies and one of the company approaches you and says, OK, I'm going to give you a job here as a machine learning engineer in our research division. Let's say you get that job and your first goal is to actually solve a problem that tries to identify why some of their models are not really working as well as they had hoped or expected. You can do all the coding in the world. You can try and go through every line of code that they have, but there is no guarantee that you will actually solve the problem. You might identify the problem and you might say, OK, this seems to be coming from, you know, one of the models, the way it's trained, either one of the hyperparameters or whatever. But you will never know the map behind that model and why they use a certain parameter. Now, obviously, you know, if we encounter this in real life, we would go and try and read about what that model does and try to solve that problem. But let's say you're not an expert in math. How will you solve a problem, a math problem, without knowing the basic math that is needed? Yes, there is a lot of coding involved, but you have to understand that math is absolutely necessary, at least to a certain degree, in order for you to perform well in your job. Or let's say a project that you're working on. The second common misconception is that there are people who will tell you that you need to be a genius in math. And this is also not true. Let's say you're given a data set at one of your companies or an employer approaches you and gives you the job that you need to do, and they are looking for results. So if you're stuck in the math, if you're saying, OK, here's all the equations that we need to look at and we need to go in depth for each and every equation, sometimes all your doing is spending more time on a problem that might not be as important to a company that you're working for. Sometimes people just need results. Yes, you need to understand the complexities in building a machine learning model, but you don't have to remember every single concept off the top of your head. And you certainly don't have to be a math genius. A lot of the math behind machine learning models are pretty straightforward to a certain degree, simple math that probably a beginner level course should should be enough to teach you all the concepts that you need. And by the way, if you're someone who struggles with math, but you want to learn all the intuition behind the math concepts, then you need to try the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. The first principles approach of Brilliant is uniquely effective. As a learning platform, Brilliant helps you understand concepts from the ground up. Each lesson has hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts. It's a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Most importantly, all lessons on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. It helps you learn every day for both professional and personal growth. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in just a few minutes a day. I have been trying this for a few days now to learn LLMs, and it's brilliant. It's also got a comprehensive range of math courses for learners of any level, whether you want to brush up on fundamentals or challenge yourself with advanced concepts, Brilliant helps you enhance your visual and spatial problem solving skills and lets you focus on the essentials that highlight the most useful math concepts. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash chemcoder or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off and annual premium subscription. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. So with that being said, let me first tell you when math is not needed. Let's say your job only needs you to build some models and hand over the models to some other person, which means like somebody else is giving you a clean data set and all you have to do is train SVMs or maybe a neural, simple neural network, or it could even be some deep learning model. And all you do is train that model and send it over to 
the next person who is trying to deploy these models. In that case, you probably don't need to know every math concept involved. If you have a team where you know, you're know you working in a group and each member of the group is responsible for certain aspects of this pipeline, then you probably don't need all the math there is to know. Maybe, just maybe, the person next to you might be the one who's more involved in the math who will probably tell you, OK, these are the metrics that I'm looking for. So change these many things in such a way. So let's see if that improves something. In that case, not everything is your responsibility. Now, when I say math here, I'm talking about the in-depth concepts for each and every model that you build. I'm not talking about the general metrics that you would need or some type of statistical analysis and those sort of things. I think those are things that you will naturally pick up on as you learn machine learning. Another aspect where you probably don't need to know the map behind every algorithm is if you're concerned with a standard problem that somebody out there has already figured out. What I mean by this is, for example, let's say you're classifying fruits in a supermarket based on their shape, color, whatever. Now, you could hand sort these fruits by yourself, or you could use something like a very well-developed image classification algorithm that you can simply plug in and use that to identify what a particular type of fruit is. Now, these are things that are very straightforward and very well developed. So you probably don't need to know much of math behind those algorithms. Another example is speech recognition and translation. Sometimes you might be in a job where you're required to use AI to translate someone speaking in a different language, or you might need to remove all the noise from some audio file just to recover the actual speech itself. Now these are pretty well solved problems that people have used very standard and very optimized methods to actually build models that can do this for you. So in that case, you probably don't need to dig around and go in depth about the math. Sometimes all you have to do is take the model that's already trained, pre-train it with some data that you have so that it can serve the purpose that you want and then just apply that model to get some results. To a large extent, ML engineers and data scientists or data analysts who are more focused on the application side of a particular project, they don't need to know the deep in-depth math involved in machine learning models and even building a pipeline. So then when do you learn in-depth math? When is it needed? Number one, let's say you're just genuinely interested in how something works, like how a particular model works. For example, let's say in LLMs you have transformers and you want to understand in-depth what these transformers do and how it works, then you probably will be interested in a little bit of math. And if you are a math fanatic, you will probably be interested in digging deep into these models and these types of intricate math. Another example where you might be interested in looking at in-depth math is when you're trying to optimize the models. Let's say a company hires you, an employer says, make sure that all the models that we train are optimized not just in terms of accuracy, but also in terms of their speed, how much time it takes to train them and how fast these model can respond to data. If that's you, if that's who you want to be, then surely you need to know in-depth math about almost every single model that you will be applying. Now, again, when I'm talking about in-depth math, you have to realize that you don't need to know the math behind every single algorithm. Believe me, I don't know that myself as and when I need. My job allows me the time and privilege to actually dig into the math and understand them and say, OK, pinpoint the specific reasons why a particular model is performing well or not. Another example is, let's say you're trying to tweak the model to change something in its algorithm, then not only do you need to know how to code, you should also know why a particular math concept is applied in that particular way. Let's say you want to create new algorithms. Then not only do you need to know how to code, but you should also know some of the fundamental mathematical concepts. Let's say you're trying to tweak an image classification or an object detection algorithm, and you want to try and tweak a little bit about, let's say, how that model tries to identify the shape of an object or the color, whatever like something in the convolutional layer that you can somehow use the math concepts that you know 
to tweak the model in such a way that it becomes more robust, much better in operation, and optimized to an extent where large images can also be processed just as quickly as smaller images. Or these days, we have a lot of LLMs out there, a lot of people building you know, applications based off of LLMs. Recently, we got the DeepSeq algorithm that came out and basically shattered everyone here in the US. So if you want to build something like DeepSeq along the lines where you're trying to better or one up somebody out there in terms of performance and also what it takes to train these models, then you should know a lot of math and also in-depth math about these models, how they work and where you can compromise on certain things and where you can actually use the math knowledge that you have to maybe bypass something that's more complex. What I mean to say is people who develop the neural networks algorithm, they probably knew linear regression. Or if you want to make something better, then you should know the basics of what you're trying to make something better. Another example where you definitely need to know the math behind AI models is if you are in academia, if you are trying to go into a field that involves research, in machine learning and AI. Because here people are less worried about application side of things, but are more worried about actually improving the architecture of these models or even coming up with new models and new architectures that can perform better. Another unlikely place where you probably need to know the math is if you are competing in Kaggle competitions. Now there's a lot of folks out there who do compete for these competitions, but if you're someone who is not into math, it's almost impossible for you to get into these Kaggle competitions and actually win it. People there are serious about the math concepts. In general, if you know the basic intuition that should be good enough. So as you are thinking about whether or not you should learn the math, there is no right way or the wrong way. All you have to know is that math is important to a certain degree, so is coding. So these are two skills that you definitely need in order to transition into this field and actually make an impact. So when you're thinking about learning the math, don't think in terms of whether you're genuinely good at the math concepts or are you a genius or are you a coding genius or a math genius? None of that matters. As long as you can learn the concepts that you need and use your skills in coding to actually build models that are robust, that are optimized, that can operate faster than simply plugging in something in scikit-learn and say model.fit. So your first goal should be to get to a point where you are applying your skills, both in terms of coding and math, to train accurate models that actually do the job that you need them to do. And besides, you know, if you're like me, you can always learn the math as you go along. You don't need to know all the concepts right off from the bat. But if you're in an interview, you're talking about a model or you're talking about a particular math concept, you need to be ready to answer questions on it. And if they ask you to actually write down the equations, which probably not many would, but if they do give you that task, you should be able to write that to a certain degree. It may not be accurate in terms of what the subscripts are, but at least if you know the intuition behind it, that should be good enough. So you have to ask yourself, what is your goal? What do you want to learn? And how much in-depth do you want to learn? And also consider factors like time, your availability, and most of all, don't try to get stressed over something that you cannot understand right away. So if you have decided to learn or you're on the journey to learn the mathematics behind machine learning, I would highly recommend that you watch this video right here that will give you all the resources that you need and also check out the links in the description because those links are what I refer to in this video and they will help you and take you a long way. So until then, thank you for watching, support the channel, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next one.